Hi, good day, good night, good evening, depending on what time you happen to be watching this. Welcome to another episode of House of Stars. I am your girl star. And today, as you can see from the title, we are doing the second installment to the series that I started sometime last year. Um, it started first when uh, Nipsey Hussle died. Um, as you can see, I'll put a link in the description box on the first video I did for Nipsey Hussle, which I called uh, Spirit of a Man. Just because I was just so impacted by like how deeply the world actually mourned his death. Um, and I take notice to a lot of people's essence and like their imprint in the world and their effect on media, whether it be in life or in death, or just certain aspects of them that I do see. So I wanted to come on here and do a video for Kobe Bryant. Um, when he had first passed, people asked if I was going to do a reading on him. And I just found it to be... I thought just just because of the severity of the death, um, I didn't do the video. Like for last year, for example, when Nate C. Hustle died, considering that it was a murder case and it would be one of those things that you wanted to know if some who did it, who caused it, uh, was why I did a reading. But for Kobe Bryant himself, um, just the, the tragic nature of the passing, um, including his daughter passing along with him, um, just had me... Eh, about it. I was supposed to do a prayer circle yesterday, but um, right now I'm actually going through my own little transition myself. Um, and literally my guys have been telling me like, sit your ass down and just take a break. So if you guys have seen why I've been quiet online and all that stuff is like, I've really just been taking a break. Like I've really just been to myself working on some stuff, um, some Saturn and Pluto purging of stuff to get myself to the next level or where God wants me to be. So it's, it's been, it's been a good journey. So, um, I came back to regroup cause I was supposed to do a prayer circle yesterday. I did say that I was going to do a prayer circle for, um, the funeral, but I, again, like I just energetically, I wasn't in the right space to do it. So I said, okay, I'll hop on here today and do a spirit of a man because as planned, I won't be doing one for Gianna. Gianna was underage. Um, and naturally, of course, as um, a psychic or spiritual advisor, like it's typically we shouldn't be reading on anyone that's underage, so to speak. Um, but just because of the tragic nature of her death um, and out of respect for the family or whoever is watching this, I've chose just to keep it strictly to reading on Kobe Bryant. Okay. So I actually have this photo here. On the side, um, right here beside my phone. <laughs> um, and I do have him here. He's born August 23rd, 1978, meaning that he fell under the sun sign of Virgo. Um, a lot of people, if you guys are familiar with Virgos in themselves, they actually are naturally people that thrive and, 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 and exceed very well when it comes to anything that has to do with fitness, physicality, um, anything that has to do with physical display of talent, whether, it, whether it be any swap, sport, dancing, whatever the case may be, they exceed very high at these things because naturally as people, they're very determined when it comes to pushing their body, pushing themselves to their limits and achieving certain goals. Okay. So I'm going to get in deeper, of course, so I can actually hear my guys tell me what I actually pick up on Kobe and we'll go from there. Okay. So Uh, just as I, I tapped in, he just sat down and I'm not saying that this is probably physically Kobe because I have no relation or connection to Kobe to actually be in touch with his spirit. Like I don't believe in doing mediumship on celebrities, especially if you're not connected to the person that you're reading on at all. But he just sat down beside me and he kind of like went on his knee and he's like, what's up? And it's like, he was showing me that he's like, he had a natural pizzazz and charm to him, meaning like people that either met him or knew him, he had a way of like, 
with his smile, he was very captivating. But he was captivating because he had a sense to him where he kind of kept it cool and collected at the same time. Like, he had this way of, like, being seen in the whole room, but not not having to say much or do much to be noticed. That's who Kobe Bryant was. Um, it's like he loved the spotlight, but it's like when I see with him, it's like the spotlight where he liked, it's like he wanted to be known like as a historian, like somebody that historically um, was notarized for something rather than it be like the most like celebrity or getting into the cameras and stuff like that. Like he liked to have his moments where he could dress up and, you know, wear expensive things and be in the best thing and be admired. But at the same time, is always on the art and the craft of what exactly he did. Um, before I actually was um, getting onto this video, I was tapping in a little bit just to see what I seen. Because just when it comes to like the spirit of the man, like I like to go like more on an ancestral spiritual level. And as I was seeing him, I just saw um, mountains and I literally saw men standing up, like man after man standing up, almost like if they're in a line of, like, you know, like how you see those maps of like evolution, like where you see like the monkey crouching and standing up and becoming a man. It was showing me like that, but it was showing me his ancestry and the height. And it was funny. Um, I don't know what tribe these people are, but they are a tribe in Africa where they jump really high. And they're from, I, th I think it's like in... Ethiopia. I think it's I think it's a certain tribe in Ethiopia, but I know it's definitely on the East African region, which makes a lot of sense because in his lifetime, his lifetime did bring him to Italy. Um, and that side of Africa is very close to Italy and certain countries like that. It's split between where the, the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea is. Um, because I'm literally seeing the height. So meaning ancestral wise, I'm pretty sure like down the line, there was a lot of like East African influence just by his height, because I don't know why I'm seeing also when it comes to his makeup, it's like he had really good breathing range. You know what I mean? He had a, like, a really good breathing range to him. And a lot of people say, for example, in sports, when it comes to, um, Jamaican people, like my culture and where my background has come, come from, we dominate in sports. We dominate anything that has to do with track because we are at sea level. So it's like because we're at sea level, we 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 have a gauge for speed. Um, when it comes to him, because he's from the like from East African people, Kenyans, Ethiopians, uh, Somalians, um, they all dominate long distance running, and that's because they come from more elevated land. And because of that, and the air being thin on the elevation of where they are, their breathing is better. And, and, and I guess that makes sense why my guys are showing me that. That it's like there's a lot of East African influence in his makeup, his DNA makeup. I feel like he's been here before many times. One of his lives, I feel like it was somewhere in Egypt. And why I say that is because I do see him like as a court jester, somebody that would do like Say like something like Cirque du Soleil or something. Whatever he did is like he displayed his talents with a lot of physicality in this past life. So in this life, it was only natural, like from birth, for him to kind of like walk into the lines of being in a sport or a career that displayed his talents. I also know that um, naturally, I think his father, I don't know if it was his father or his grandfather, was into basketball too. So of course, it was kind of inherited in ways growing up and seeing it. Um... When I see him, especially when it comes to him being a family man, I think that he was always a good father, but he had to adjust into actually being a present father. And why I say that is, is because he's naturally used to always having something to do. Okay. So I think that there was some problems with him along the lines in his fatherhood of learning how to actually sit still and be present because he was kind of a person that was always looking ahead. He had like, he wasn't. He was grounded in nature, but when it came to his 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 um pursuits in life and what he wanted and what he saw himself doing, he was always very anxious. He was always thinking like like he was the kind of person that at 30 years old he he was already thinking about what he'd be doing at 40. You know what I mean? Um, so that was one thing with him, is like he had a hard time actually staying grounded and staying present. Very loving man not say the least like he was a very loving man but it was like he wanted to be able to create generational wealth or generational comfort even after he went um 
What I do feel for for him too, I think he had a feeling that he wasn't going to live that long. But I don't think he thought he was going to die this young. You know what I mean? Like I had, a, I think that he thought maybe like, okay, he'll live to like 60 or 65. You know what I mean? Like old young. But I don't think he ever thought that he was going to die this young. Um, when I see the spirit of the man and who he is as a person is... He wants that people see his legacy as a lesson. You know what I mean? Like, he's a person that is very big on just, even though he has a sense that he always looks into the future, he likes to look at things from the past to the present. Like, almost like, look at the evolution of how it grows. The character, the character build of the person. The character build of a man. Like, he's not a person that kind of, like, treat like judges people for face value like if he was a if he were to meet somebody he would want to know the actual history behind why that person is the way that he is or they the person is the way that they are you know what i mean um he takes a lot of notice to that because it's it, he likes to really get into the psyche of a person that's the kind of spirit i see he was i don't i don't see him as a superficial person he had a way to be very one track minded but he wasn't superficial by any means that's something that i do see about him i get the sense too like it's like he has great admiration for people that work hard um it's like he can't he's one of those people like you can't be lazy around him like even in the littlest like if you like if his wife wanted to sit on the couch and just watch tv and chill out for the day like that was like mm -mm, that was a no-no like you got to get up and do something do something productive he was very passion oriented so in his mind it was like everything that he did it was like if you're passionate about something why aren't you doing it every day every single minute of the day like i don't get why you want to just sit here and do nothing like, I don't get that. That's like, who does that? Like, you like sewing. Why aren't you sewing up a storm right now? Go do that, you know? Um, that's something I do see about him. I do get the sense that he was a very generous man, too. Because I don't know why I also get that as well. Sometimes even too generous um, in certain ways. Because I feel like he was a kind of person, like, he always wanted to build somebody up. Or help somebody, like, achieve their goal in some way. And sometimes he would believe in people more than they actually believed in themselves. Like, he's really... Okay, so like let's just say, like, if I was going to put him into terms and words of who he is, is, he's a sculptor. He's not only a sculptor, but he's also a person that he's a choreographer. Like, he knows how to take... He knows how to see people's weaknesses and use them as benefits and put them where they're strong. You know what I mean? That's the kind of person that Kobe Bryant is. Like... He had a really keen eye for that. Like, it's like, hey, you may not be, you know what? You may not be the dunker, but you be the best guy on our fucking team to pass the ball to. Because you will make sure that anybody that passes out, if that ball's passed to you, you're going to make sure it gets to that guy. Even if it just means that. Like, you may be the guy that gets my water every day, but you're the only one that I rely on because you know exactly what I like. Like, he's... That dude. You know what I mean? That's the energy I get from him. Um, I feel like when it came to when he passed, I don't know why I get the sense. And it's so weird. And, 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 and I said this before in Spirit of the Man with um, Dipsy Hustle, which makes me wonder if this is something that happens to people when they die. Like, I hope I don't have to hear what they're talking about this for years to come. But I always get this thing that it's like usually about three weeks or three days before it actually takes place. It's like, you kind of have a sense of knowing. Um, I think the reason why that is, because I have a feeling that he had a dream about a grandparent. I see a grandparent coming to him and it was so vivid and real. And it was just like, ooh, like what was that about? But like that day that he went on the plane or the helicopter, I don't know why I get this feeling like, it's like he knew that he sensed the day was off, but he was thinking that, Oh, wow. Okay, he was thinking that the day felt off because it was a chance that they were probably not going to have a good practice. Like, he thought, he felt it was something that was going to happen while they were there that would be make the whole day off. He didn't realize it was, like, the end of his fate. But he felt it. For, like, I just, I don't know why I felt my gut, like, just go, like, is this, my? I feel it in my gut. Like, he just kind of knew. You know what I mean? I almost get the sense, I, I, and, and this is so crazy, because I, I really don't want to go into this, but 
I almost get the sense, even when it came to his daughter, if she's used to sitting in a certain seat, he made her sit somewhere else. Like, okay, if she likes the window seat, it's like, nah, you sit over here. You know what I mean? Like, there was little instinctual things that he was doing that day that was, like, that kind of, like, made him know that it was his day. You know what I mean? Um, but I, that's what I see when it comes to the day that, that he passes, something that he sends. But I don't know why I feel like there was something that was going on, and it had to do with finances, but it had to do with the team. So I don't know if there's, like, another parent or something, but, like, a parent that's also a business person, and they're kind of not getting the money right so that they these kids can get what they need to go on their tour or whatever the case may be. Like, I feel like it was something of that nature that was kind of offsetting his mood because it was like, okay, I might have to deal with some bullshit when I get there. You know what I mean? Or this is on my mind. I got to get this dealt with, you know? Because um, that's another thing I do feel about Kobe. It's like he was one of those people when he wanted to get something done, like he would obsess over it until it was done. Like, okay, like... He'd be at dinner and he could be just relaxing and his face just looks all made up. And his wife looks over at him and be like, like, Kobe, like, what's your problem? Why do you look like that? And he'd be like, I should have fucking mowed that lawn before I left. Like, now all I can think about is that lawn right now and that the sprinklers are going to go on at 10 and it's going to make the floor all mushy. Like, he's that guy. He's very, OC he can be OCD when he's ready about things. You know what I mean? Um... As a person that has his spirit and who he is, there are certain things I was picking up about him that I was just like, mm, you know what I mean? Um, and I think this has to do with some of the indiscretions in the earlier parts of his career. As you know, some people, aka also known as I.E. Gail, um, did mention some of his indiscretions in the past. And when I look at him, I, I don't see him as a person that is like a sexual assault type of person. I don't think that he naturally sets out to actually um, violate women. I would say that 100%. I don't think that was the case. But would I say that he was a not exactly kind to the woman that he would engage in sexual acts with during that part of his career, knowing that he was having an affair on his wife? No, he treated them pretty cheap. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think it was one of those things that he treated them very cheap. And especially, I feel like he would also get very annoyed with them if they were trying to play. Like, you know how women have, like, shit tests? And, like, they have a way where they kind of um, play little games to kind of get attention from the guy and shit like that. Like, he would hate when girls do that. Like, he would just absolutely hate it. Because it was just like, bitch, I don't like you like that. Like, suck my dick. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of, like, the energy I'm getting for him. Um, and that's the side of him where I could see, of course, that I don't think that he was, he's all that pleasant all the time. Um, but that's something that I do see. Um, but the essence and the edge of it, essence and the energy of who he is, I do feel like at least he can say that he went down as a legend and you know what I mean? And that was his aim and pretty much he, he died doing it. You know what I mean? He died wanting to be that legend you know not just that not not just being the legend um Kobe Bryant in the NBA and all he's given to the NBA but also being that legend Derry father that brought her his daughter up in the game and even changed maybe the whole like essence and the narrative to women's basketball you know what I mean it's like he died wanting to be a legend and he will continue to be legendary I think for two more lifetimes, he'll be legendary. Like, cause I think that in the next lifetime, he's gonna do. Cause I feel like his next lifetime is like he feels like he's gonna have to pick. Feels like he's having to pick up where he left off, and then I feel like the next lifetime is just kind of like natural that he is legendary. You know what I mean? And I, that's where I just got that. But <clears throat> that's what I do see for Kobe. And what I get in the essence of who he is, the spirit of a man, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. Um, my condolences to the Bryant family and may they rest in power. May Kobe Bryant and his Gianna go to the light and see the light and go to the other side and may God have mercy on their souls. So I do want to thank you so much for your time and rocking with me and watching this video and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, make sure that you do subscribe to this channel. You can also share this video as well. Also, 
If you look in the description box, you can watch The Spirit of Men by for Nipsey Hussle. And again, you can also book a reading with me. Book a reading. You, you can hit me up on any means of the social media handles that I do have provided in my description box. I do want to thank you guys so much for your time and rocking with me. May God bless you and the angels protect you. Good night.